What's the worst thing you can do to a computer? Um, probably drop it off of a building. Like or what's a computer deep, hate crime? Or like I a, mean, not like a. I know there's lots of hate crimes on computers. That's not what I meant. Against the okay, this is getting weird. I uh, man, I hate the computer that we do the show on. I know you do. I've hated it for years. I know you have. Um, you know, sharp-eared listeners have probably heard me complain about it before, but yeah, I'm gonna get a new computer soon, and it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna do your taxes. I'm looking I mean, forward to it. Uh, do anyway, I guess. No, I mean it's gonna it's gonna get up and walk around. It's gonna skateboard. That's how great it's gonna be. <laughs> and I'm going to like, <laughs> what's the computer version of having sex? Oh my goodness! I'm gonna make out with it in front of the old one. Oh my god! And then after that's over, I'm gonna do that thing that I figure out is the worst thing you can do to a computer. But I I think hurl it down a ravine or something like that. <laughs> ravine, you and ravines. <laughs> It's always ravines. What about box canyons? You're really, I don't know. You're not exploring all your options here. That's not. Uh, like throw it off a bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we got to go worse than that. Um, I'll feed Shoot it. Shoot holes through it. Feed it to hyenas. Feed it to hyenas. I don't know. Seems like I'm going to hurt the hyenas. <laughs> I guess. I don't think that's good for hyenas. Yeah, yeah I guess it's just probably not good for <laughs> hyenas. You ever see those videos online of like the industrial shredders or crushers where you can mm-hmm. just stick literally anything in it and it just brah, just gone? Oh, wow. No matter what it is. So it's like a baseball, you know, it's like rip, 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 and then blah, you know, the strings and bands are shooting all over and then it just goes gone. Wow. Or you put, um, oh, I'm going to put like metal uh, bearings, you know, balls in it because they'll just roll around. They can't go down. Mm, they will. Oh, wow. It all does. Huh. Yeah, life is an industrial grinder. Yeah, I guess. It's all going down eventually. Wow. Welcome to the Just Enough Trail Podcast. I'm your host, <laughs> Caliban, joined as always by my co-host. Hi, I'm Mikan Hana. And we're here to talk about all the news that's fit to cast in the world of nerdy entertainment. Yes. Uh, that news is going to include a talk about some trailers. Yes. We've got a trailer park situation on our hands. Yes. Because we've got to watch all these trailers and talk about them. A lot of trailers coming out. I feel like we've done this, well, we have done this for almost six years now. And I feel like I've identified a season for trailers <laughs> that I never write it down. <laughs> and so five times now I've gone, is this when all the trailers come out? I right. think this is when all the trailers come yeah. out. Yeah. Or at yeah. least uh, many of them. So we've seen a lot of trailers. We're going to talk about them. We're here to talk about the Game of Thrones finale as yes. well. Yes. So we're going to be trying that on. And uh, if you are joining us after hearing our aborted uh, live show that we attempted to do. Yeah. Uh, we promise that we're going to keep the length of this show down. That's why I've been doing live ones recently. Yes. Um, some the aforementioned computer problems prevented us from going live. We're going to solve that. Okay. Solve that problem. All right. Sounds good. What about an old style baseball bat? You know, just a sure. give it a good yeah. casino. <laughs> yeah. Or... That's two office space. Oh, okay. It's well, been done. It it has been done. But a nice open field, sure. <laughs> just a nice open field yeah <laughs> did yeah open fields were where people died for a long time miller's crossing changed all that uh-huh. we know this <laughs> uh, that's when it all changed yeah. um yeah and then we'll be talking about uh in our feature uh the league of extraordinary gentlemen volume yes. one by mm-hmm. um, kevin o'neill and uh, alan moore yes what was that noise? I think that was my computer making a noise. Okay. Our Yours computers are and just... mine. Going to, holding hands. You ready, Thelma? Here we go. Yep. Off into I'm, I'm going to a ravine. Let's talk about the news. <laughs> Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> because you'd miss Aladdin making $105 million oh, in boy. North America this weekend. Wow. That's a lot. And that's not even in counting Monday. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, got an extra long weekend this weekend. So. It's been the sixth. That's how it works. It's been the sixth highest Memorial Day weekend ever. Uh, it just beat out the Hangover Part Two. Oh wow! <laughs> and the most uh, successful Memorial Day weekend open was Pirates of the Caribbean at the World's End in 2007, which is the oh, wow. fourth movie I think. I don't wow. know. Was I've it, lost track. It came out in 2007. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I've only seen the first one. Oh, really? Yeah, because I saw it and was like, huh, that's an- okay, that's enough. Like, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I I saw at least the first two. I don't know of how many I ended up actually not, seeing. Wait, that is the second one, isn't it? I don't know. What's the something something tides? What's the one with Penelope, Pen- Penelope Cruz? Uh, that might be that the second one. That was in like 2014 one. or something. Uh, there, there's one where it's like... um. 
the sea captain who um it it's like Davy Jones. Davy Jones, thank you. Why do yeah. I know that? I don't know. Because you know stuff. Davy Jones is locker. Exactly. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, so anyway, uh, that's a big deal. Um, people hate this movie. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's, it's, well, you know the the circles that I go in, which is like podcasting and YouTube uh, video circles. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody likes this movie. Uh, everybody's like, "Why, Disney? Please stop this. Please stop. So please stop the live action films. Yes, and it's well. never ever going to stop. I don't think it is, especially when it makes a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Uh, and there's a couple. This is. Well, Dumbo already came out, and I think Lion King is later this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Three this year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. And then Beauty and the Beast uh, two years ago. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bad. Uh, anyway, space mine a little bit, guys. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, remember the show Peep Show? Uh, yeah, I do. FX is going to try to remake Peep Show with a gender swap as the uh, sort of hook. Oh. Okay, I mean, I, I I guess that could potentially work, but they're, it's kind of like that they're they're losers, you know, um, that can't date anybody. So I guess they're these gonna, will be female losers, female losers yes. who can't date anybody who and are American. It'll be uh, Carrie Dornetto. Uh, she's a writer um, behind Portlandia and okay. a Superstore. Uh, she'll be writing this. Okay, I heard some people say some good things about superstore yeah i haven't yeah. actually watched it yeah but. it's like the office it's just like at walmart or yeah yeah uh, i haven't watched it either although it's been recommended to me so um i, I don't think that <clears throat> it's interesting because i don't think this is a great idea necessarily yeah i think that what uh, that mitchell and webb look yeah intended totally intended yeah uh, is really what made that uh, thing go yeah, and they so, play really well off of yeah, each other. Yeah, you're going to have to cast it really well. Yes. You're going to have to get two women that are really funny and really work together well. Yes. And the gimmick of the POV thing, I, I never really, like, I would have watched Peep Show whether or not that it had that. Yeah. And if you watch it long enough, you kind of forget that that... You do. It, you're not always reminded that that's what's happening. So, yeah. So the, uh, the gimmick's not going to help it. It might hurt it. Um, hopefully the writing will be good. And yeah, if you cast it well. Yeah, I... I, I I'm right there with you. I the news you came really from Sam well. Bain, the creator of uh, the original show. Okay. And he was talking specifically about how um, inclusivity and um, diversity, uh, an old, old wooden ship, as we know, um, <laughs> is like important to like get voices out there and see more stories. And he said, like, I'm excited about this because I want to see like two female losers like screw up and, oh, okay. and do all this stuff sure I so see yeah it. so that's good that's the who that's the good side of the coin then you flip it over the scarred side of the coin Rachel! <laughs> is um <laughs> the fact that leda calagridis is going to write a star trek star trek <laughs> oh hey, uh, hey star wars knights of the old republic movie for disney yeah now, why is this the scarred side of the coin i'll tell you she's not a good writer yeah i mean i don't think that you know I don't know if she's bringing like more women voices into what she does, but mm. Shutter Island, uh, not good. No. Uh, she wrote Altered Carbon, or at least a lot of Altered Carbon. Yes. She wrote, uh, what else did she do? Uh, Battle Angel Alita. Yeah. Which, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's got the sort of female empowerment baked in, but yeah. she's just because, just by existing for this long, she is now the default. You know, she's the Ray Bradbury of of sci-fi, weird sci-fi properties. Right. She gets the first call. So now she's been promoted to writing for Disney, and she's going to write this Nancy of the Old Republic thing, and that's not great. And then we don't know for sure, but it's rumored that this will be the film trilogy that D and D are doing. That Ben Off, Ben Off and Weiss of yeah. uh, Game of Thrones are going to do. Yeah. And you know that they're all into female empowerment. No, they're not. Cry, Brienne. Cry. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, so it's just worried about. Star Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, let's see. Good news? Oh, no. Bad news. Oh, double bad news. Awesome. <laughs> Don't laugh. I, Talk. I know. I know it's bad news. Like, I'm not excited about this. Like, um, uh, I, didn't she write one of the Terminator films, too? Genesis. Yeah. yeah which is not great. <laughs> no. Um, and no, it's the worst one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's the absolute worst one. I know. And I, I strong I don't female know. character though. Yeah, yeah. I we like Battle get... Angel Alita, but yeah, she's she's clearly got a connection with um, with Cameron. Cameron, yeah, she, yeah. Maybe she's writing some avatars. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But it, this is just 
really here's bad the only news. Sol- yeah, here's the solution. We take her out. Uh, yeah. No. Um, get better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Stop right. learning on camera. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody gets better. Like, you, your first movie's not as good as the second movie, or hopefully third, whatever. Get better already. Yeah. You've been doing this for a long time. Why are you right. so bad at it? Right. Right. Female characters better. Well, I don't, like I said, I'm not looking specifically at her female characters. I just brought this up in context of a female, a successful female writer who is going to write to um, characters who are going to be garbage people, <laughs> just like on the old peep show. Yeah. But they're going to be female, written by a fe- uh, female writer. That's great. Yes. And then yes. we go to the blood and boobs guys are hooking up with I know. the lady who writes all the sci-fi that can't write sci-fi. Yeah, I know. Bad news. It is bad news. Here's some good news. Yes. Taika Waititi's Akira will be coming out in summer of 2021. Okay. All right. This is the movie that Jordan Peele was going to do for a while. Yeah. And now um, it's uh, Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi, huh? Um. Well, I mean, the action sequences in Thor Ragnarok were good. Um, has he ever done anything serious? I don't know that he has. I was just can't. wondering that. But I think it'll have maybe a comedic bent to it. Yeah, but Akira really doesn't. Though. No, it doesn't. It's very self serious. There's no tongue in cheek. No, you're right, and there's not really room for that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no, no. I mean, there's ab- absolutely room for it. The antics of um, Canada and the and the bike punks or whatever. There's there's room for comedy there. But yeah, it's there's like brutal violence. Like yes. when violence happens. Yes. It's brutal and final. Yes. And um, life is and life is cheap in Neo Tokyo, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might. Uh, yeah. Um, I it'll be interesting to see. Um, I like Taika Waititi as like a as a director, and I think he's a decent. Like you said that. <laughs> All right, I think he's a, a decent actor too. I don't know if he'll probably act in the film, but um... no, no, let's hope not. <laughs> Come on, man. You're not uh, Hitchcock. That's, who who do you think is going to play Akira? Don't put yourself in your own movies. Do you think they're going to get an Asian actor to play Akira? I'm or? realizing that I don't really know a lot about this production. Um, they better. And if not, then, like, I know that specifically Taika's, uh, I call him Taika, but Mr. Waititi has um, worked a lot. It's important to him to get Native um, actors on there. You know, yes. not just white people. Um, specifically like in New Zealand, um, you know, native New Zealanders and stuff like that. And so I think it'd be cool if you took the hit of, it's not Asian. Uh-huh. And then you went, okay, yep, but it's Benetton. Like we just put everybody in this. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, So uh, hopefully they do that. Yeah. Or I... you just make it, because it's, the thing is like, yeah, I, if you're going to make it, first of all, why make it? <laughs> Once you were over that hill, <laughs> why'd you cl- climb out of that ravine yeah yeah um then you um say okay well then you know if it's going to be a american or an international production why would it be all japanese is it going to be set in tokyo is it going to be right this is the argument that like rupert what's his name had about the ghost in the shell movie i see even though that ball was dropped yes (laughs) into a ravine yes and then the ravine was set on fire Uh uh-huh yeah um but that was the initial idea which is Yes, they're not all Japanese, but we want to have as many people represented as possible. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up. Right. If you mean it. Ex- exactly. What about the Cobra reboot, though? Oh, my goodness. What's that going to have? I don't know. Sylvester Stallone wants to reboot Cobra as a streaming series. <sighs> okay. Wait, would he be like producer or something like that? Or? He might be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely going to be a producer. Okay. Um, I'm assuming he's not going to be starring in it. Wouldn't it be funny if he starred, had a cameo as a guy that runs a pizza place? <laughs> okay, that so would be Cobretti kind of funny. So goes to get pizza. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's pizza. Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> With the scissors. He gives him pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your fault if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we've talked about this movie on the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that would be interesting. It would I be interesting. Guess. Now, who gets paid? Because remember, yeah. this will be the th- third time this is this is like the star is born of adaptations is it really yes because this is based on a book called fair game and it was adapted into cobra um yes. and then we've talked about the crazy story of it going to the screen yes. it was adapted slightly more faithfully in 1991 i think uh in that cindy crawford William baldwin vehicle fair game wow yeah both of them are about a woman who's a 
what is she like a journalist or something like that and she's being stalked by a yeah ching ching like yeah, axe uh, gang yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah right which is random. so how do you uh whoops uh, how do you uh turn that into a series <laughs> um I don't know. I guess like you try to make the gang like interesting and diverse as well. <laughs> make them more characters. I hope we see the origin of the pizza sisters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell that story. Yeah. No kidding. Um, I don't know. This has potential. I think to to like go somewhere. I really enjoyed Cobra. I think it um, is a um a rip roaring good time and it's uh you know a fun action film so i think it has potential to be go to series um i love how there's always these shootouts you know with like a million gang members yeah there's never any cops like i don't care if you're in like wine country or i think they were in like a orange grove or something like that but he kills like 50 guys from the back of a truck i know where are are the cops (laughs) there just would be a state trooper there'd be somebody yeah Uh, for sure it reminded me we just watched um the end of um the second season of true detective Mm -hmm. which i think is not great but it is unfairly maligned people are like oh it ruined the series and it's like it's about as ridiculous as the first one is when you really think about it when you really think the first one just took like a southern fried version of like seven and just stretch it out to like eight episodes yes yeah My i would i would agree with that smells psychosphere <laughs> all right all right it's the charisma of the leads that kind of kept it going i think you're right but at least in the end of true detective season two there's a shootout in the middle of nowhere right and they're in like a forest it actually reminded me yes. of the end of i think it was run all night the um hmm. uh liam neeson movie where he's got to protect oh, his kid because yeah. he's, yeah, and they, they go, go on to this the run. cabin. Yes. You know, you're, you're in a remote location. But if you're just like driving, if you're in Ojai, like there's going to be some cops, right? Yeah, yeah. Work that in somehow. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it was kind of kind of interesting to see like the shootout, like it was like in like the um, uh, Great Red great redwood forest kind of so yeah um, that was kind of interesting um but yeah um it it could have had a better ending <laughs> than, it, yeah. than it did but oh, we're um, talking about your detection, yeah. yeah yeah um but I, I think it ended okay um but i mean there were definitely some things i would have probably changed like like not having Rachel McAdams be pregnant, <laughs> but oh, spoilers! Yeah, spoilers wow. for a series that's how many years? Yeah, old? it's weird. Like it's almost like Nick Pizzolatto doesn't know how to write women. Strange. I. It's almost like it, he has something in common with uh, what's her name. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, at me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else is happening? Uh, it looks like Sonic the Hedgehog will be delayed as the character will be redesigned due to internet backlash. Yeah. So they're well, not going to make their November 2019 release date, which, honestly, now I'm a little more towards the conspiracy side. Okay. How are they going to compete in November? I, yeah, with the the scary, scary rendition of Sonic. Right, I don't know. but like, November's like, well, I guess November's like the it's summer. It's like prime It's like time. the summer of fall, basically. It like is. Like a lot of... But there's also big films that are coming out. Mm-hmm. This is, I don't think this is a February necessarily, but it's definitely like a like a May, you know? It, yeah. I think they're expecting it to be a blockbuster. And we've talked before about how it is perfectly positioned, I think, to be a, as a property that is known by kids today, is known yes. by adult kids who have money. Yes. Um, but <laughs> it doesn't look very good. And I think a lot of people might just go, let's you know, keep playing the games. Right. So right. How, how is this ever going to make it in, in November? So now they have know. a chance to push it back, get a new release date. Yes. And make the Maybe hedgehog do look well. Better. Yeah. <laughs> this is really, this is weird though. This is kind of unprecedented. The whole point of a trailer is to make people think that it's great. Whatever, yes. whatever this turd is that you're selling and mm-hmm. polishing. And the fact that like, even if it's bad, because we've seen this before, and you and I both know that the first thing that you do is you double down. You never immediately acquiesce. Right. You go, you know, if you write something kind of racist on your Instagram, you're like, hey, man, I got a lot of black friends. And then more people complain. And you go, I'm so sorry. Right. 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 Uh, but almost immediately they're like, all right. 
I'm so sorry. We yeah, it's terrified bad. You. Yeah, you're right. It's bad. Yeah, but so it's like that's what the conspiracy is like. Oh, I'm starting to kind of tip in that direction now. Well, but it's like, how did nobody on the who was working on the film say this is bad? How they might did just, they not know? Right, but also who's who's to say that they don't have a folder in their After Effects that's ready to go that is the new redesign? Well, right. That that's the conspiracy. Is that right? So I just assume that they're going to quote unquote work on it, but it's already to go, already to go, or that time was already budgeted in to their development because they made a Bobo version first, and they knew they were going to get a better time time uh, slot for it to come out or something like that. Um, I mean, like. <sighs> What what is you know the, the the I guess the purpose of having a Bobo version and then like having people outcry about it is like to my air horn? Uh, is to How long do we want to talk about this? <laughs> I know <laughs> is is so you create buzz around the film. Yeah, and that you know it, hopefully more people will want to see it. Right. Well, they created buzz. Yeah, they did. Not to be positive buzz. No, buzz is buzz. Exactly. That's I got a pillow. It says mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> um well, okay what else uh you want to talk about masters of the universe sure uh masters of the universe is coming out in 2021 as well yes um all march right 5th. see that's a march movie i could see that yeah um i hope this is better than the original film that's all i'm gonna say about that oh um you don't like the original film no not really only 80s kids will have a violent r- nauseous reaction when they think about it <laughs> I guess um, it's just not a great film like at all. And I don't feel like it plays homage to the cartoon as well as it could. Noah Centino is playing the lead Prince Adam slash He-Man. Um, nobody knows who he is because nobody watches those Netflix rom-coms that he's been in three of them. Oh, wow. So you've had the opportunity to see him. Yeah. You haven't because who cares? Right. Uh, he is uh, he's not like the whitest kid in the world. Okay. Here's what I mean by that. That's fine. He, uh, he man's always been blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fine, and we should definitely explore going in another direction with that. So great, you know, um, he's a little darker complected. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, I guess, he's six one, but he's not. He's got like a big neck, but he's <laughs> kind of skinny. You know, he's not like really sure. ripped. So I don't know if he's just gonna if he's just mass gaining, rah, just eating, you know. He's just going to eat window chicken to breast. Gain. Yeah, chicken yeah. breast. Yeah, yeah. Wow, delicious. Um, <laughs> and, uh, or they're going to go like CGI or bodysuit or something. Huh. I kind of hope they don't go bodysuit. Um, no? No. Like the guy in that, uh, oh, commercial, speaking of commercial, in the uh, He-Man and Skeletor uh, d- uh, Dirty Dancing commercial. <laughs> I don't really remember that one. Oh, okay, well, um, that's your homework. I guess so. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I don't know. I just think that bodysuits can often look, quote unquote, fake. You know. So <laughs> okay. Um, I guess it's not a horrible way to go. But I have a feeling he'll probably bulk up for the film. But <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you want to have, maybe you can do a Shazam type thing. Because the thing for me was. True. Prince Adam, hmm, He-Man, hmm, they both got bowl cuts. I know, They've right? both got abs on their abs. His muscles have muscles. So right. just because he puts a pink shirt on, people are like, huh. <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe they'll do a thing where they'll just have kind of lanky Noah Centino go, I have the power, and then he's... Like and then he's like all CGI bulky. dude, yeah. CGI dude. Well, I guess I could see that. Sounds terrible. <laughs> Do not want. What else is going on? Uh, it looks like we've got a little more information about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier miniseries. All right. Uh, it'll come out in August 2020. Okay. That's and coming up. Yeah. And it'll be directed by Carrie Skogland. I know that name. Do you? I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where, but I feel like I know that name. I feel like you don't. Oh, really? I don't know how you possibly could. Oh, okay. But please tell me more. Uh, I thought I did. But I bet you're not going to say anymore. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. And so, therefore, uh. I will <laughs> now tell you, because I okay. uh, Google voiced it, uh, she is a Canadian director. Um, she has not directed anything that you've ever heard of. Oh. Or that anybody has ever heard of. Oh. Okay. Perhaps the Children of the Corn 666, which I'm assuming is... 
Children of the Corn 6. Yeah, I'm assuming as well. <laughs> wow. Nice work um, on that one, guys. Yeah, really creative title. Uh, she directed okay. some episodes of The Walking Dead. She directed Punisher. Uh, so she's been cruising around TV. Okay. Um, I don't, Disney, Cinematic TV. Disney seems to like to give newer directors a go. Yeah, this is more of a veteran, you know, veteran director type situation. They did yeah. this with... Um, on uh, Defenders and uh, like Jessica Jones and stuff like that too. It's like not, but you know, I, look, I don't know the difference between film directors and TV directors. I think TV directors probably are known for their reliability, whereas film directors right. are known for their vision. Well, I, I think you're... Does that make any sense? Yeah. That's why uh, Zack Snyder should be directing a lot of TV. Wouldn't he be a great TV director? Yeah, I think he would. He would cry every night about how small the budgets are, but I think that he could really find success on TV and I wish that he would... Try to find it. Right. <laughs> Stop ruining movies. Yeah. Um, just bring it home. Um, bring it home. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? I don't know. I I mean, I'm excited about this series, but I I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this news. Um, I, I, I want to see um, them interacting with each other because I think they have really great chemistry with each other. Um, and I, you know, Falcon is the new cap, so, um, I want to see that as well. Um, I just, I, I want these series to go really well. <laughs> these new Marvel Disney plus series. So. It'll be six parts. Okay. What are they going to do? Just chill? <laughs> um, just throw well, things at each other, play video games. Well, I mean, it oh, was, what if it was? What if it was just full on bromance, Tumblr <laughs> come to life, and it's yeah. just them hugging each other and <laughs> I love you, picking man. shirts I out for each too. other, and yeah, 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 <laughs> just a <laughs> yeah, that would be artist. something else. Come on, yeah, Disney, dig into this fan base you've got. Start shipping these guys. Come right? on, people want it. <laughs> um. It would be cool if, like, they're um, solving some, like, crime thing together. <laughs> solving or crimes. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So original. But. <laughs> In a Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a Just Cause movie is coming from the creator of John Wick, Derek what? Kolstad. What? He's writing the script. Oh, my God. If he doesn't have the line, take that, you pipeline jerks in it, I ain't going. <laughs> gonna ask you how do you feel about this it's funny that i hate john wick but i love just cause and when i think about it just cause is just john wick with the parachute basically (laughs) yeah and also nobody killed your dog so (laughs) or your girlfriend you don't know that (laughs) maybe scorpio had a dog maybe scorpio scorpio the reapers (laughs) yes um, Let's stop the show. I want to play Just Cause 2. Okay. You no, know, you're enabling me. No, I mean, it is a cinematic video game, so I guess I could see it. The new one sucks. Does it? The, I, I don't know the whole history of the of the series, but the developers, are, if they're the same ones, but it's really lost its way. Like, it's just not. Just Cause 2 was, was, was the, the top. The big one. Yeah. yeah. And it's all downhill from there. That's too bad. But you got a parachute, so you'll be fine. <laughs> Well, let's stop screwing around here. Let's talk about these trailers, okay? We're in trailer park time. Before we yes. do that, though, should we talk about the Dungeons & Dragons commercial? Yes, let's. <laughs> the Dungeons & Dragons commercial. So, Renault, this company, there's not a lot of Renaults on the road here, I don't think. I don't think um, so. But uh, other places, sure. And they made a commercial. It's airing in Brazil. And it is a live-action sort of rendition of the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon mm-hmm. from the 80s, which we've talked about on the show previously. Yes. And it's awesome. Like, it looks great. Like, the casting is good. Yeah, they, the casting um, is spot on. All the characters, like, use, you know, their ability or whatever, uh, you know, so it shows that, like, they knew what they were doing. Like, whoever put this together was, like, a big fan of oh, yeah. <laughs> the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon show. Yeah. And uh, they even have Uni, which, like, is awesome. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, it's got Tiamat. Yes. And Venger in it. Yes. And the Dungeon Master. They got the colors of the uh, heads on the Dragon Ride. They and did. The Dungeon Master's like this For some terrifying reason. CGI face. It's like, yeah. just cast an old old little person actor. Uh, I know. I <laughs> He's know. He's like, hello. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kill him. Get rid of him. Um, so anyway, yeah, like what's going on in Brazil? 
I heard that the cartoon was really popular over there, and so <laughs> they were like, you know, somebody thought this was a good idea, and everybody was, was like, really? yeah. It was popular in Brazil? That's what I heard. I still think that, like, the guy that pitched it uh, at the ad agency was, like, a real big fan. He's like, I got a great idea. Now, just let me finish. Uh-huh. Let me finish. Uh-huh. And then, you know, just tells the tale of six teens who are, well, five teens and a kid that... Uh, we're sucked into a ride. I know. I don't like this. <laughs> and, my uh, favorite line. Yeah. And and the best part is it gives like a resolution to the story. I know. Because they get out. Yes. The car is it's magical. The, it is the final episode of Dungeons and Dragons, basically. Yes. Yes. It's awesome. It's none of them are 16, really... so they shouldn't be driving. But <laughs> I don't know what the laws are like in Brazil. Right. But it's it's really well done. I want a um, City of God... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons mashup. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'd be terrified. There'd be guns all over. Yeah, well, yeah, well, they'd be bows and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, that would be a little bit better. <laughs> You've been selling drugs to these orcs? I don't think so. <laughs> so, anyway, that's really great. Check that out online if you haven't seen it yet. All right. It's trailer time. Yes. What do you want to hit first? Um, Let's have... talk. Why did I give you the choice? I don't know. Uh, let's talk about. Downton Abbey. That was going to be my first choice. Downton Abbey, the film. Yes. The king and queen are, are coming. coming to Downton. Yes. And we got to get old Carson out of mothballs one last time. I know, right? Poor, let that poor guy rest. I know. Let him enjoy retirement. But that's the, that's the entire story. The king and queen are coming. Yes. And that's the story. That it is the story. It takes place in 1927, I think they said it was. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I don't... I love the series. Um, we went to that... <laughs> thing in west palm beach that was great that yeah, was awesome so like i guess you make a bunch of new props or do they shut that thing down <laughs> I ring ring right. hi so a u-haul is going to be there on monday <laughs> we're going to need the uh, bag with the contraceptives in it right we're going to need right. everything yes the uh, jewelry and the, yeah 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 what do you even do um i i think they just start over i mean the costumes are going to be different right because it's a different time period yeah um well, yeah, a little, little later. Yeah. Um, Mary's not going to wear those old rags anymore. Of course not. Uh, and everybody's with us still, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Most amazingly of all, Maggie Smith is still Oh, my goodness. One. I know. Yeah. I kept thinking about that like, while I was watching the trailer. It's yeah. like she's um, she's amazing. Does it see- oh, We're just talking about Downton Abbey now. Yeah. So that's what the rest of the show is going to be. Does it seem like – I feel like – uh, Bates and Anna were like the main characters. Like they pitched this show and they thought that that was going to be it. They and thought it as was. the show went on, it was like mm. they kind of suck. <laughs> like what's Mary <laughs> up to? And like they started right. to focus more on some of the other characters. Yeah, I agree. Maybe it was always going to be. It was always an ensemble piece, I guess. But I felt like you know Bates and Anna was like a really big thing early on. They were early and then on. As yes. the show went on, like he's in jail, she's in jail. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it wasn't like. You know, there there was a lot of, uh, you know, with, um, oh boy, let's come on, we can do this. Yes. With William and 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 Mary. Yes. And uh, uh, <laughs> who's Dan Stevens' character? Oh my gosh. I can't remember his name. This is terrible. Yeah, we're dead. We're um, bad. Bad fans. Um, I want to, it's not Mark. I want to call him Mark for some reason. Well, he's a Mark on the road. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they should do a million of these. I don't know why. Everybody's around still. Why don't they just do a million of these? I, I agree. And I think it's going to do really well. Um, I think everybody who's fans of the show will go and see it. Um, and there's quite a few people who are, are fans, I think. Um, and uh, it's just a really likable show. I mean, there's going to be somebody that you like, I feel like, because there's such a wide variety of How do they characters. do justice to everybody? Oh, for the movie, yeah, yeah. I, that's hard. Because Anna and Bates shouldn't really even be in it, should they? Like they, did they leave the Abbey? I know that they've got their own thing going now. They're starting yeah. a family, and yeah, I don't, <laughs> Does anybody yeah, I don't care know. About any of this? I, All right, anyway, we're excited. They, there's some excuse. End of that story. They're back. We're excited. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's what they were not excited about: Terminator Dark Fate trailer has come out. Ah, what'd you think? Oh my god, like. <sighs> oh, I should make a note. Yes. Um, for canon heads, this is going to pull a Superman Returns or whatever have you and just say that or a Halloween um, 2 or Halloween, the, the Halloween that just came out. 
where it's ignoring the other films. It just it's this is a sequel to Terminator Two. Okay, I didn't realize that. So Lewis, how does that change your view of it now? I don't know, because um, the the last couple of films have been kind of bad. Oh, they're so, all garbage. Yeah, um, Caligaris. I know Cameron is back working on this. Um, Sarah Connor. Why doesn't he direct it if he's if he wants to be back so bad? You know. I don't know. I, I know he's working on Avatar, but come on. I know. So anyway, um, let's actually talk about it. Um, in the thing, we see, <clears throat> excuse me, we see uh, Mackenzie Davis um, is protecting a young girl. Yes. Um, so she seems to be the, you know, heroic. And she's, we can't tell what she is. It doesn't look like she's a Terminator, but there, she's got some goo she's in something. her or something that lets her do stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Connor shows up with some rocket launchers and guns. There is a Terminator uh, played by um, Gabriel Luna. Who is it? Just a scary robot? Not enough anymore. It's got to be a gimmick every time. But uh, his gimmick is that he's. It seems kind of like he's um, either like the Terminator from Terminator Three, or kind of like the John Connor Terminator from you know, spoilers for Genesis from Genesis. In that he's got a skeleton, but he's also got liquid metal or goo or whatever. Right. And the effect of that is he can be in two places at once. Which is, that's not a bad idea necessarily. So right. we see like two of him like running around. Okay. Yeah. Um, two is scarier than one. Uh, I love that song. <laughs> um, why is John Connor not in this? I think he may be dead. He's he he maybe did. Oh yeah, maybe he did or maybe he didn't. But what did he do? He maybe did. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I think we are taking this female empowerment thing seriously and going, why is a man the savior of humanity? And it's like, well, because he was in the future. Like, right. That's the whole point. Right. But we're going to go off the whole no fate, but would you make it? And I think in changing the future, I think he's going to get killed or something and he's not going to really be in it. Okay, great. Um, Can we just solve this Skynet problem already? I know, right? <laughs> I know there wouldn't be any more movies, but... The the problem seems to be Skynet, not like yes. who's going to lead the resistance or whatever. As right. long as there are killer robots coming back from the future, we've got a problem here. Yes. So I thought we fixed that in the, in the second movie, but apparently not. we did too. You guys uh, nailed it. I know. You nailed it. Let's stop. I know. We never will. I know. We never will. Um. Last thoughts. Okay. So she's supposedly like the Terminator lady or she is a Terminator. She's not... Um, she's supposedly protecting a young girl. Like, is it supposedly Sarah Connor or something like that? Are we doing time travel? No, no, no. She, in this trailer, she says like, I'm, I was her or that's me. Or she's just saying like, oh, I was, I was like in that her. position. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Arnold's in this somehow. Uh, we don't know because he can't be the Terminator from Terminator 2. That guy is no. thumbs up. is gone. Right. So yeah, we don't know anything. Okay. But I just, at this point. Okay, you're going to ignore the bad ones, but what? how can you f- fix it? You're just going to make another bad one, right? I, I think this so. The story is so convoluted at, at this point. Who, who cares? I know. I know. Plus, I don't like Mackenzie Davis, but I didn't want to harp on that. <laughs> um, what about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yes. Speaking of lighthearted tales. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. It looks lighthearted, <laughs> but we know better than that. I just what, like his movies, Quentin Tarantino. His movies can be about whatever, and they generally yeah. are. But I, I'm still. First of all, this trailer looks awesome. It does. I'm a little. I do. Th- he keeps saying he's going to quit. Like this is his ninth film. He's going to make one more. He says. Dun, 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 uh, oh, dun, Star dun, Trek. Dun, 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 let's hope. <laughs> and he's going to quit. And I think he should. Oh, okay. Because he's because again he's nailed it. Also. I don't – he can only now set his movies in the past because he wants to keep making movies about dudes in muscle cars knocking women around, and that doesn't fly anymore, and well, it shouldn't. that's true. So yeah. he can only set things in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, he he is not old enough to be a dinosaur. He aspires to – well, maybe he is now, but he aspires to be an old Hollywood dinosaur, you know, like a Robert Evans or whatever. And I say, sure. fine, but okay. So I'm watching this movie, and it just seems like – yeah, there's women in it, but one of them is like Sharon one of the most Tate. famous murder victims of all time. I know. And the rest are all like sex cult groupies. Yes. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be very sensitive. I'm just not really no. craving that. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, is good. I, I hear you. That being said, it looks 
It looks fantastic. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like the idea of like Brad Pitt being Leonardo DiCaprio's like stunt man. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but yeah. I know, right? You think Leo came on and he's like. All right, how do you want to do, do this scene? Uh, okay, well, I thought I'd just uh, scream at the top of my lungs. You know, you've probably seen some of my other work. <laughs> I don't and know if that's... Like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Oh, it yeah, started or what, but yeah. yeah. So anyway, Leo's yelling. Yeah. It's going to be a fun... Shutter Island, everybody. Goofy. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's going to be a fun, goofy sort of movie that's set just two doors away from the <laughs> Tate household. I know. I know. <laughs> just, I know. I don't know how they're going to land it. I don't know either. But I'm going to I'm a little nervous. the ride. Yeah. What else is coming out? We saw a trailer for Westworld. Yeah, that's we West did. Westworld. Yes. Season three. Looking very different. With Aaron Paul. He just needs somebody real. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the stinger. <laughs> Once again, just jumping right to the end. This is uh, your real talent. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so basically, I don't want to be treated any differently, uh, although I was totally right. Uh, it looks like they are going to double down on the being out of the park. Yes. And about it being, you know, the rise of the robots, more world than West. Yeah. Um, I think it's too bad because I think that they had a lot that you they could have mined. Unlimited there. story potel- uh, telling potential. I know, in right? A series of I don't know, six or parks or whatever it was that yeah. could be anything. The nature of reality, humanity, whatever. Right. And it just feels like they couldn't wait to get out of the park because they didn't know what to do with it. And so I know. for me, it's I'm sad to see that go, but I'm glad that they are going in the direction that they clearly wanted to go from the beginning. I guess. Tell the story that you think you can tell, I guess. I, yeah, I, I, you, you make a valid point. So, um, uh, yeah, it looks dark and sleazy and, uh, yeah. I'm interested in their take on, because we never know exactly when it's set or whatever. Right. And um, I'm interested in their um, take on the future, like... Because apparently it's just, it's a future where you can murder and rape people uh, for fun. That's fun. At the park, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like Aaron Paul, you know, is clearly in some, he's a criminal or a thief or whatever, but he right. looks like he's not, you know, rich. So seeing how he lives yes. in this future. This crap sack world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's got a smartphone. <laughs> Of course he does. The smartphone is like, we get a shot of him flipping through stuff and it looks like it's like a Craigslist for, for criminals. Because there's like oh like Grand Theft Auto, burglary, and he's uh-huh. like, mm, uh, so this one looks good. <laughs> so I don't know if that's that going to be... be interesting. Yeah, I want to see if... Um, it reminded me of Nerve, hmm. that YA book that became that... Uh, the YA book that became a movie. Oh, all of them? Yes. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, with Emma Roberts and Dave Franco, and they're like, they joined this... Um, there's this app called – I'm not saying this is a good movie. Okay. But I'll give you the pitch, which is kind of good. They joined this app called Nerve, which is basically a participatory game okay. where you take bids. And so people – it's like truth or dare. People go, um, you know, show your boobies, you know, in the middle of the street or whatever for $10. And it's like, okay. And then like uh, – I if, think this sounds familiar. Yeah, if you complete the tasks, then, you know, you get to go up, up higher and higher in the ranks. Okay. But there's some like sinister thing behind it. Of course, of course there, there is. is. Yeah. But I, I just mean, like that – that's a sort of dystopic look at technology in a future. That's a future that I think is just the present or tomorrow or whatever. Right. This is like taking it, you know, probably farther out. And I just yes. want to see what they come up with as far as world building goes. Yes. We'll see. Probably nothing. Yeah. Well, based on their track record. I know. Uh, what about the Star Trek Picard trailer? Um, I feel like I've talked about this a million times. <laughs> I have a couple of other podcasts and we're bringing it all home, yeah. Uh, like you suggested, uh, Zeppelin style, and we're gonna talk about it finally one last time. And I'll never have to talk about it again until <laughs> I have to talk about it again. Right. Um, well, it kind of looks like we're picking up where we more or less left off. Like, I mean, it's got um, some pictures of a winery, um, and uh, you know, the last episode, all good things. He's at a winery and he's quite well, a bit older. At a vineyard, but yeah. A vineyard, excuse me. That's what I meant. If it was a winery, you got a lady in a Starfleet costume. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, beam her directly to sick bay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, all right. Um, 
Uh, anything um, you want to say about it? But I'll, I'll take over. Uh, this looks like it's got the tone that we want. You know what I mean? Like it's. I think what everybody wants is an eighth season of, of TNG, but we're never yeah. going to get that. But you know, we we do. I think if Captain Picard was just having a good old time and celebrating his you know his emeritus years as they're describing it, uh, that would be disappointing. You know, we're going to need a little darkness here. Sure. And so we are picking back up you know 20 years later or whatever and we see that uh things didn't go so well necessarily and we don't uh John Luke Picard's going to find himself in a in a place where um uh, things aren't aren't so hot. Uh we get a little couple clues like we know that he uh was he's addressed as admiral. Yes. Although he has left Starfleet. Yeah. So we and they know ask him. that he does leave Starfleet, he does reach the level of admiral. They talk about a a rescue uh armada. Uh, we don't know what that refers to. A lot of people speculated it will be a follow-up on the uh, destruction of Romulus from the last okay. TNG movie. Okay, that so, makes you know, sense. And then the, the unimaginable happens, or the unthinkable happens. We don't know what that is. Right. Um, and, I mean, they do ask him, why did you leave Starfleet, Admiral? And that's, like, specifically in there. Um, um, I'm looking forward to it because... Um, like you said, we're not going to get more TNG, but we're getting more Picard. Um, so I I still feel like they could have been a little bit more creative with the title, but um, I'll take it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it comes out later this year, right? Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to that. Um, okay, me too. Yeah. And uh, I think it's good with, uh, it has a little darker tone too, so. Yeah, um, hopefully, uh, I was thinking that maybe, uh, I was talking with um, uh, Gooey um, about this, that, <laughs> that maybe, like, the tragedy is that, like, the old crew is dead. Oh, that would be bad. You know, maybe they're, you know, part leading this armada, you know, this rescue armada, and it isn't a Romulus, it's something else, uh, but something dangerous, and, like, through the execution of this, uh, the Enterprise, you know, is to E, I guess, at this point, would be destroyed. Uh, um, although he was pretty much destroyed in Nemesis. Yeah, it was. And so, you know, you go like, well, how come they haven't asked any of the old crew to be in this film? Maybe they're all dead. Oh, yeah, that would be really dark and upsetting. So, well, I hope it doesn't come to that, but... You you want it uh, mature. I know. You're going to get it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Why does the poster look like signs? That's a bad move. Ooh. I hadn't thought about that. It's got the, 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 first of all, this is a, this is, this is no way to run a, a vineyard. Why don't you have this, <laughs> the rows go like that? But yeah. It's yeah. got this sunset and it looks a lot like the poster for signs. Oh, you've got a good point. Um, I think they're just. These aliens are allergic to wine. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> Let's talk Game of Thrones. Yes. Oh, the Iron Throne. The last episode ever of Game of Thrones yes. has come and gone. Yes. The story has been told. Uh-huh. The saga has been completed. Yes. The fans are furious. Yes. What happened? Um. Well, <laughs> I mean, long story short, like... Oh, no, that's it. You got it. Oh, Long story short. Oh, okay. That's that was what it was. <laughs> they made a long story short. They did. <laughs> um, Tyrion decides he doesn't want to be the hand anymore. Oh, dubba 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 dubba. What? Are we gonna do we spoil do spoilers or? Um, I think we should. Okay, so spoiler talk. But you're not gonna just say what happens in the episode, are you? Um, That's what you're gonna do. No. No. I'm not going to just do that. <laughs> but you're gonna start doing that. Yeah. Make it quick. Okay. So. Tyrion decides he no longer wants to be the Hand because Daenerys has killed innocents and everything. So he gets locked up. He talks to he talks Jon Snow into like killing Daenerys. Jon kills Daenerys in the and you said it was very cliched, and I I have to agree with you. You know, he kisses her and then he stabs her. Yeah, she's it's, his queen, it, but he doesn't want it. I know, but he doesn't want it, but it it's like in like one of the most cliched ways that it, it could have happened. You could have come up with a much more creative way for him to have killed her. Um why did it have to be while he was kissing her because it seems like he's 
I mean, obviously he didn't want to, but it seems like he's double crossing her as he's doing it. Well, he is. Um, and Drogon like finds them and like gets really pissed off and like like burns down the throne. What? <laughs> and I then... love the discussion online because it's like <laughs> I love the fact that this is not. This is not what they wanted us to talk about. But what we're talking about is whether a dragon understands what knives are. And it's right. like, you have brought the series to the wrong cul-de-sac when you have got us wondering that. That means it's not clear. The only You want us to go, oh, the passion. And I understand the choice. that It's so tragic. And we're just like, do dragon know how knife work? <laughs> That's not what we're supposed to be thinking about, know. you know? And so I've seen, like, a lot of videos and, and podcasts, people talking about, like, no, I think that, like, ultimately Drogon, you know, maybe he can't talk, but he understood that the lust for power is what ultimately consumed his mind. Are you freaking kidding me? He's a dragon. I know. He doesn't understand that. I know. So the, what, the thing he does makes no sense. But no. the writer's just, we need Daenerys dead. Dead. Stabbed. We need the throne to be destroyed because that was her dream. Dragon. Blah. Throne. Yeah. It's just literally like know. a checklist. I know. Like you can see a water bottle in the series finale, but I'm surprised you didn't see like a post-it note with like those items on it. I know. And then Drogon like takes her dead body away. So the next question is, well, how the hell does John end up in prison? Well, because he's honest John, so he probably goes and tells somebody. Sure, whatever. I, so I we just did yeah, this. So we just cut out of there and cut to... Several weeks later. Tyrion, yeah, which they didn't put on the screen. But no. Tyrion, and then after all this bullshit, like, they have the nuts. They have the unmitigated testicles to have it wrap up with stories. Stories are so great. This has been such a great story. <sighs> you are really going to do this? I know. Oh, man. How, how do you type with one hand like that? I know. And then, like, who has the best I'm done story? Talking about it. <laughs> say whatever else you're going to say Brand, about Game of Thrones. Brand I thought we were going to do this for a while, but I'm ready to. I'm oh. ready to be done. I don't think it was like the... the lost finale. Okay, yeah. Remember how great the lost finale no, was? No, it was terrible. Remember everybody talking about that? Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, we didn't because we wanted to just be done. Um, with it. I don't think that Bran has the best story. I I think that like Sansa and Arya both have better stories than he does. And also, having a good story does not make you eligible. For, for rule. To rule. No. <laughs> no. They just wanted to talk about how great stories are and look who has a great story. The aristocrats. It, Let's make this man our king. Oh, my God. Uh, the Fresnel was blocked in China because of this whole trade war thing. Really? Yeah. So if you're a Chinese Game of Thrones oh, fan. Oh, that you're sucks. Like, what? What are you guys talking about? What? I can't see it. <laughs> okay. oh you're better gosh. off. You're better off. Wow. That's terrible. Um, Yeah. Um, I does think, it destroy the rest of the series? I don't know if it does, but I don't think that Bran should be king. And I, I kind of was pissed because I thought that Jon should have been king, even though he killed Daenerys. Do you see yourself going back and ever watching Game of Thrones again? I don't know. Yeah. If you had asked me that before this season, I might have said yes. But I just... And just knowing what happened this season and, and just how crappy the writing was and, like, just how forced everything was, I don't know if I will. And that's really too bad because I think that they had, um, you know, some really great seasons along the way. There, there is this meme that's been going around about, like, a horse and, like, how right. well it's drawn and, yeah. like, what seasons and stuff like that. And I think that's fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, so. The, the real question is, how big is Peter Dinklage's mantle, and will it be able to fit the Emmy that he's absolutely going to get for this season? Well, I mean, I'm fine with that. I just, I just wish it. Yeah, I I feel like a lot of characters did not get the ending that they deserved. Like Daenerys, that heel turn. I feel like that was not. Um, they didn't show their work for that. John going up to the north again. I mean, I guess that's an okay ending for him. But, it, like, what happened to the the prince that was promised and, like, you know, <laughs> know. Aeon Targaryen <laughs> and, like, this all this stuff. I don't know. We brought him back to life for what? To kill Daenerys? And you never know. First of all, we don't know if this stuff's going to happen in the books or not. Like, John's dead in the books still. But I probably. And there, there are p- parts and points where you can see 
oh, this must be the skeleton of Martin's story. And then there's a lot of like cock jokes. <laughs> that's that's D and D, right? Because when right. you think about it, like you know, having um, Aemon Targaryen, like you know, being this guy who was basically the rightful king, uh, living at Castle Black, that was established, you know, in the first season, the first episode, or whatever. Yeah, I and know. so having that mirrored to like John being in the same position, somebody who deserves the throne, but because of political. Uh, messing around ends up alone at Castle Black. It's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. I was okay with everything that happened. I just wasn't okay with the rapidity that it happened and the (laughs) stories are so great. Like, the just kind of the dumb touches. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I liked what happened. It just, they all happened in an unsatisfying way. If you're the dink, what do you do? What do you mean? Well, this is a great role for him yeah. um, because, you know, because it relates to his physicality or whatever. But, like, I saw a movie that was not a good movie, but he was good in it called Rememory, which sounds like oh. what a kindergartner calls the game that you flip over the <laughs> cards. And yeah. what was cool about it was, like, he was just, I don't know if he was it was written for him, but anybody could have played the role. It had nothing to do with his size his or anything. stature or whatever. Yeah, he was sure. just people just treated him like a person. So I think it'd be great if he could just go on and be in some amazing films. I agree. But I'm afraid that he's just going to be in Elf 2 and uh, Terry Gilliam movies. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? I, I feel really bad hope, for him because, I hope that's not because the case. he's so talented and he's he so watchable that I, I hope that he can find just good roles that don't have anything to do with um, his size. I, I agree. Three Billboards would be a great example of the thing that I don't want for him. No. No. It's just not a great film. Um, um, so, yeah. <laughs> How do we end this on, a, <laughs> on an up note? Um, I hope that, like, like Tyrion, you know, like, I hope that like Peter Dinklage, there are uh, that the other actors in this, you know, I hope that they get um, other really great roles um, and that they're not uh, finding it difficult, you know, because this is all they've done, like the Stark kids, you know, like I, I want good things for them. Yeah. But, you know, it's it just hard. Well of them. It's hard to know if that's going to happen. I or think not. all the, I, the main people I think are screwed. You think so? Yeah, because. Main characters are picked because they're good looking, you know? You think that, like, yeah, Amelia Clark is going to go on to have a huge... She'll get into another movie. She'll get into a period thing, you know, like a Tudors or something like that. Sure. She'll be fine. But, like, all the side people, like um, like Stephen Delane has been playing, you know, smaller roles forever. Uh, Ian Glenn had a huge career before he even got to Game of Thrones. Right, right. So I think all those people will be fine. But And I think, like... Nicholas Coster Waldo will probably go back to <laughs> starring like being the Sean Connery of uh, Scandinavia or whatever, but sure. I don't think he's going to do a lot here, you know? Okay. All right. Well, Unfortunately, um, God, what's her name? I love her so much. Lena, Lena Hedy. Yeah, Lena Hedy. Uh, she's now at that age that, you know, actresses don't get a lot of roles. Oh, don't say so that. It's kind of it for her and. John Harrington can be in Pompeii 2. Oh, my God. How? I don't know. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> it's the most British thing since Union Jack Bloomers. We're talking about <laughs> the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Volume 1. Yes. Drawn by Kevin O'Neill, who is a uh, long, long running uh, comic book, uh, English comic book artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's done 2000 AD stuff and um, kind of like uh, lesser known stuff. He was never, you know, didn't do big two things. He's um, sure. kind of a pillar of the British comic book uh, community. And of course, Alan Moore, who yes. needs no introduction. Right. And will probably try to kill you if you do. <laughs> They got together to form this team, uh, uh, do a book about a team called the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes. Who are who? Um, well, uh, Wilhelmina Murray, or a.k.a. Mina Harker, who is, um, I guess, better known as... Um, the lady whose head will fall off if you take her scarf off. Okay, that's that's who nope. I thought she was. Everybody's going to hear about this. <laughs> So when I years years ago when I first pitched this to you, or I just talked, well, what are you reading? Oh, I'm reading 
this thing called League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And it's basically like a collection of, it's a super fiction, it's a crossover fiction of all these characters yes. from Victorian novels yes. and like folklore and stuff. And then it's like, oh, so who's this lady? Oh, she's, uh, where's this scarf? Oh, she's the lady that if you take your scar- scarf off, her head will fall off? Yeah, that's what I thought. No. I know. No, it's not her. I know. Although that guy is the guy who had a hook for a hand and it's on the car handle. It's not like urban legends. It's like literature. <laughs> I know, but I so <laughs> thought that's what it was. But why would it? What a, what a power. I know. What a power to use. I know. Why would <laughs> No. Well, if she was so like Sorry. defiant about like I'm not taking my scarf off and everything. But... No, she's disfigured. I know. All right. Anyway. Yeah, she's Continue. Mina Harker, who yes. is married to John Harker, who, um, you know, Dracula um, had hold love up. never dies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who? Um, yeah. I mean, this is all like retcons, basically, of you know historical fiction. Yes. Um, just like the movie Dracula was a retcon in that I guess she didn't like Jonathan Harker. Which was <laughs> She weird. was going to marry him, but yeah, but she really wanted to like uh, suck, uh, so to speak, uh, Dracula. But I mean, in order to make their love story work, they had to add I, that. I, I, I it's know. It's not about like a foreigner coming and ravishing our white women. It's okay. about, you know, her wanting more than her provincial life. Right. La, da, da. Right. Tell me more. Um, well, it is also, um, well, let's see. Who else is in it? All right. Uh, come on. You're not ready to go. Uh, it's, it's Neil Campier. The Invisible Man. Yeah. Dr. Jekyll, a.k.a. Mr. Hyde. Alan yeah. Quartermain, the yes. English explorer and um, the uh, hero of um, the basically like the King Solomon's Mines. Yes. Uh, and Nemo, a, as in Captain, Captain Nemo. Nemo. Yes. Yes. The... Captain of the Nautilus from yeah. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And you already said the Invisible Man? I did. Okay. Griffin Holly, the Invisible Man. All right. And they're all, this is Moore's attempt to create a metafiction based on British literature. Yes. And as this series continues into volume two, um, volume, there's a volume called The Black Dossier. Uh, and then there's volume three is set in three time periods in three parts. And then volume four is coming out currently. One of the reasons we're doing this is the final issue is coming out. Eh, it's going to be a little while, actually, but it's coming out this year. Okay. And it'll be the end of the series. Okay. And yeah, it is basically like one of the reasons Tolkien created the Lord of the Rings is because he bemoaned England's lack of a unifying mythology. Sure. Um, England has mythology, but it has a lot of different sort of mythologies because of different invasions and folklore and stuff like that. But he didn't, he was jealous of the Scandinavians, of the Germanic peoples of having Wotan and, you know, Thor and all these like figures. And so he he wanted to create like an ad hoc sort of thing that people could look at. And I think he succeeded. People Mm -hmm. talking about Frodo and Aragorn and and all this stuff. Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm not saying that that's what Moore is doing here, but he is drawing specifically on English fiction. Yes. Now, that takes, of course, the form of public domain characters when you're yeah. doing something set in 1898 like this is. And later on, it takes the form of how do we have Harry Potter in this without using Harry Potter. the words Harry Potter. Right. And they pull it off. Yes. They pull it off. Well, and they have a character named Bond. We in do. this, that's but interesting he's not because James Bond. That's a well, and right, and using Bond period, I think was um, risky for them because when Bond appears, the actual James Bond appears later in Black Dossier. Oh, okay. They can't call him. They don't call him Jimmy Bond. Well, they call him Jimmy, but like they can't say James Bond because they'll get sued. Right. So it goes. It almost becomes for me, and I've read the entire series and I like it a lot. But we'll talk about it. Um, One of the things that I really like is that watching them skirt the copyright infringement. I mean, they really are. I mean, it really is. You can take this to a judge and go, that's James Bond. Right. I'm Albert Broccoli. I'm I'm alive again somehow. Right. (laughs) That is, that's James Bond. And I think you'd have a pretty good case. Yeah. But they have to satisfy that. They also have to introduce a bunch of characters without... Making it seem like, huh, huh, huh. Right. Even though that's what they're doing, but they're not doing it in this Star Wars prequel way where it's like, you're on solo. Like they right. are 
having people be the reference is the joke, but they do it in an oblique enough way that they a don't get in trouble for copyright violation and b don't hit you over the head with it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they pick their shots. Like there's one part where a, a character is a girl character is like, I'm determined to have a good attitude no matter what happens. And, and then her the name is, is like, Pollyanna. Oh, Pollyanna. I know. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Yeah. That was, that's yeah. a gimme. But yeah. So tell me, there's six issues in this first volume. Like, give me the kind of overview. What happens in these six issues? Um, well, the character Bond is. Which, uh, oh, I forgot to mention. That's not a real character. But Moore does this thing where he uses like this th this collection of characters all kind of work for the most part like um this is set one year after the events of Dracula. Yes. So you've got Mina Harker. Yeah. Then Alan Quartermain is an old man because his books were set in the early 1800s. Right. Uh, and later on, they meet uh, Auguste Dupont, the famous detective. Yes. His books were set in the mid uh, early 1800s as well. So he's, he's very an old, old. old man right. as well. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, you have like Nemo's been around for a while, but he's young enough to do this. Jekyll and Hyde was um, in the 1870s, I think. Um, so, yeah, that all works. But Moore does something else where he'll do like back formations of characters. And so you'll have a character who is like the son of the famous character if the guy was too too early in the sure, canon. Yeah. Or if you've got a character like James Bond who will appear in the 50s, you can imagine a great-grandfather character who also worked for British Secret Service. Right. And you just make Campion Bond. So right. So he's still like the the spirit of the character is there in a yes. way. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, right, continue. I don't know. So he um, is kind of um, their... Um, their I, contact. Yes. With uh, the British government... And uh, he... Which, was it called MI5 back then? I don't know that it was. I don't know my uh, history um, of British intelligence. But he um, basically employs uh, Mina Murray or Mina Harker. Um, and... Uh, Mrs. Mia Wallace. Yes. And he has her go with Captain Nemo to get Alan Quartermain, who is in Africa and is doped out on opium. Yeah, they're assembling a, a team of... Yes. Victorian Avengers, basically. Basically. And to what purpose? They don't really know. Uh, Bond just tells them know? what to do. Um well he um has them once they're all assembled, um they they have to get um uh it's like this green glowy thing can't remember what it's called catherite catherite um they have to get it um from the 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 doctor he's the uh, chinese uh englishman i guess um the devil doctor the devil doctor dr fu manchu oh is that okay yes okay they couldn't say fu manchu because and sax armor's been dead for 100 years but I, I, his, his estate, estate or something, or something like that has that trademarked, so okay. they can only like obliquely refer refer to him. It's the devil doctor. Um, so he is who, by the way, people don't know. Fu Manchu is a villain character in a series of books by Sax Romer. It's one of those. There's a really popular thing like around that time where you could make the book about the bad guy. Sure. You know what I mean like Phantomas yeah. or this Phantomas actually is a later. Fine. Okay. Uh, where it's like the hero is is a bad guy, and so you kind of follow him. Uh, the Artemis Fowl books actually are somewhat recent. They're, oh, um, really? He's kind of he's supposed to be a bad guy, but he kind of does good stuff. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah, they got to get this cavorite, and cavorite is um, based on um, is a fictional substance from Jules Verne's uh, To the Moon book. Oh, okay. So he pulls from all kinds. He takes settings yes. from other books, takes props from other books. Yes. Side characters who aren't going to be, you know, the folks of the narrative will show up. Like, yeah. um, who's the guy? Um, the professor from that Jules Verne book shows up. Okay. And this substance cancels out gravity, basically. Right. And so it, in, in this time, you know, there is no, um, or there's not supposed to be any uh, powered flight. Only balloons right. and stuff like that. And so Like a hot this, air balloon. Yeah, this would give... Fu Manchu, like an, an airborne battleship that would allow him to, um, yes. you know, mercilessly bomb whatever he wants. Right. 
So they, but that's not what's really going on. No. That's kind of what's going on. Um, so they are able to get it back from the devil doctor, and um, they give it to Campy and Bond, and he's like, oh, my contact M will be really pleased yes, about M, this. the head of British Secret Service. And, um, and Mina thinks it's Mycroft Holmes. Right, who in the Sherlock Holmes books yes. was said to have worked for British intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've backformed that in later years to be like, oh, he was like a spy, you know, for MI5. And they've used that in, for instance, the um, Stephen Moffat uh, show, um, Sherlock. Right. Um, And uh, so she thinks it's Mycroft Holmes. Um, This takes place several years after Sherlock Holmes himself is dead. Yes. He is mentioned um, because, of course, he is public domain. He is. Yes. And he is. Real and famous right. in this world. Right. Um, but it is not Mycroft Holmes. We find out later it is none other than James Moriarty, who supposedly also died at Rockenbach Falls. Right. Um, but we find out he did not. Right. Um, Nobody died at Rockenbach Falls. Yeah, right. <laughs> that day. So um, <laughs> I think it's bold of Moore to go, I've got Sherlock Holmes. I'm not going to use him. Right. I'm not interested in that. I know. I'm interested in, you know, these sort of broken people, these heroes, you know, who are not necessarily the, the heroes of their stories or they're at right. weird parts in their life. And right. I'm not going to have a, in his prime, Sherlock Holmes be my hero. <laughs> I know. He's just going to F off out of the story. I know, right? Um, so they find out because um, the Invisible Man, uh, I think Captain Nemo tells them to, like, track campion back i think he's just suspicious I or think is he, he just, just suspicious goes to he see just what's, does it. what's going on yeah um so he uh tracks him back and finds out it's james moriarty so he comes back to the group and tells them and they find out that james moriarty is going to have an airship and he's going to and the thing is is that he is he is the head of british intelligence yes but he's also has a crime, crime empire yes and it's one of those things where like MI5, like, sort of set him up to be, you know, like their contact in the underworld. But he's also, it's like uh, Jack Nicholson in The Departed. You know, he's he's their informant, Mm -hmm. but he's also got his own criminal empire. So he's like, am I just pretending to be a crime lord when I sell drugs and run run hookers and stuff like that? Or am I actually a crime lord? It doesn't matter. Right. But my biggest competition is... Uh, the doctor on the east side of London, and so yes. <laughs> this is kind of a weird plot, but I'm just going to like wipe out the east side of London and I know. just take care of that. Yeah. So the Invisible Man comes back to the team and tells them that that's what the plan is. So they're like, "Well, we need to stop this." Um, so they're too late to stop the airship from going up, but uh, Captain Nemo luckily has a hot air balloon, so which is from another Jules Verne tale. Um, with, with a hot air balloon. Yeah. Um, the Victoria. So, yeah, and the balloon is called Victoria for right. some reason. Because um, that's what it is in the story. Okay. <laughs> so um, they take the hot air balloon up to the ship, and they fight his guys. They they get, what is it called again? Cavorite. The Cavorite. Yes. Um, they get the Cavorite. Um, they actually basically destroy it, don't they? No, they... They try to they take it out of the ship, so the ship starts crashing. Yes, which takes a while, but it's a story. And Moriarty tries to grab it, and the thing is, is that it just it sh- I don't know it cancels gravity, but it shoots out a beam or something like that. Yeah. Basically, it's in like a protected container, and then you yes. can open. They use it actually to escape at one point because they're like <sighs> underground uh, in the doctor's lair, and they yeah. need to they find like a a room that has windows that is under the the, the, the river yes the and so the they're terms. able to shoot the windows out and then they open the bottom of the container and it like blasts them out uh and moriarty back to the part he grabs the thing away from um, mina but it's open and so he blasts up into the sky and he can't turn it off so he basically just he just blasts up goes into into the sky. okay and spoiler alert yeah they find his frozen body in a later volume oh wow yes okay he's orbiting earth oh wow is this a good story without all the references um without what's, all the references what's he doing here what's he trying to do alan moore i'll i'll uh i'll cue you up 
Boy, there's a lot of talk about Chinamen in this, huh? Yeah, yeah, there, there is. And, uh... And Moriarty calls, uh, what he calls Mina, like, get this ugly lesbian away from me. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Uh, Moore knows that. Um, he's He is doing a thing. Uh, my question is, how sensitively does he do the thing and is the thing worth doing? Mm. Uh, the tone of the books uh, as it goes, the series goes on, always remains somewhat tongue in cheek. But like we said before, Maybe on one of those live shows that we had to get rid of because my computer cacked. Uh, the violence in this is brutal and yes. and swift. Yeah, like it when, is. When it ha- comes down, it comes down and it does not um, spare you know the innocent. No, it doesn't. And so those things remain all throughout the series. I will say as we get to later time periods, all the Chinaman stuff does stop. Okay. He, That's he, good. In fact, he was going to call it originally um, the League of Gentle like people or something like that. Okay. He wanted to call it that, but then he was like, "That wouldn't make any sense for like 1898." So let's just call it Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. So he is steering into the unenlightened uh, sort of mindset of the times. I just think that when you read it, and I don't know how hard he should condemn it in his own text, but when you read it, it's like. It's a little. I think racist. you're doing a thing, but yeah. boy, it's, some of these things are like it hurts the ears to sort of hear, yeah, or eyes to read. I guess, yeah, yeah. So that back to my original question: Is this a good story <laughs> without all that stuff? That's a really good question because I mean I think well it, the, your the, your answer is the references did you like it, I guess. are really great in this. Um, yeah, I liked it. I, although I have to say, um, let's just being completely honest. Um, the introduction of the invisible man is really disturbing in this <laughs> yes. because he's at an all girls school and he's immaculately concepting like, like he's raping girls. Yeah. He is raping girls. Yes. Well, it wouldn't be and, an Alan Moore story without rape. And I, I have a problem with that, you know, and like, they're like, okay with this. I'm like, they're okay with him being on their team. Like he does a lot of questionable stuff. They like, need an invisible guy. <laughs> They're really pissed at him at one point during the story because he comes home and he's wearing a police uniform and they're like, you killed a police officer. He's and like, he's like, yeah, I was, I was cold. cold. Yeah, I needed a jacket. I have to be naked to be invisible. It's winter. <laughs> it's like. And he didn't just knock the guy out. Like no, he I know. He the guy. Like yeah. he's, that guy's dead. Well, he's, it's another situation where he is a villain. You know, the book is about him, but he is the bad guy in the book. And he, in the book, he is stomped to death by a mob who's just like screw this invisible man oh my god there's our shit title screw this invisible man yeah before he screws you yeah uh but uh yeah but you know alan moore redcons it so that you know it wasn't really him um there's all you know there's I, you, know, you haven't answered my question still but um i i did like it i i, I knowing I, where it goes i I, st- I i don't know i feel like it is a chance to Celebrate British fiction first, yes. and it is a narrative second. Uh-huh. Um, especially just myself knowing where it goes. That being said, seeing someone like Mina who has like survived this horrible experience, but also, and I really like her character. But, yeah, I do too. But it is true. Like, where did a music teacher learn to do all this stuff? I know. <laughs> but anyway, know. but she is like totally pivotal. She's the cyclops or what have you you know she keeps the team on track uh she solves it she stops moriarty at the end basically she doesn't like make him fly in the air but she breaks the machine and everything yeah and she's in this world of men and monsters and you know puts up with all of it and and kind of keeps things on on track um but you know i don't know that being said It's uh yeah, and I there she has there's an interesting um thing with her because she um not only were in this universe, Quartermain's exploits were history books instead of like fictional books yeah, and so she grew up reading them and so she's he's her hero and right um, but then she meets but she them meets and him she's and she's like, very disappointed never meet heroes yeah right um you've got the the conflict between uh Alan and Nemo in that Alan is like the ultimate colonialist. And Nemo is the ultimate, like, you know, rebel sort of terrorist, somebody who was educated in Britain, you know, right. but as a um, uh, Hindi or whatever he is, you know, is like 
hates Britain, wants to destroy Britain. Right. He's just kind of put that on pause to do this stuff for now. Right. And you got their Hulk. <laughs> he's he's the Hulk, basically. I, I know. <laughs> just, and... Like, I know Jekyll's a bad guy, but is Jekyll right. like a huge monstrous Hulk man? He is in this. I know. He is. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that, uh, more, you know, displays that well, like, and, um. But there's a weird thing too, where it's like, she's a girl and he's like this monster, but like beauty can tame the savage breast, but beast in this, like he, he won't hurt her for some reason. Yeah. Actually, you know what? That might, like, I haven't read Jekyll and Hyde in a long time. That that might be a part of it because I know in the again here we're Stephen Moffat. Does Stephen Moffat think he's Alan Moore? Is that I what's don't going know. on here? Is that what's effing going on here? <sighs> um, but he uh, he's got that too because he won't. He'll kill and eat anybody's liver or whatever. But he st- stays away from uh, his Gina wife. Bellman because she's yeah Fox. Right. Um. What else? Did you were you ever confused? Let's, let's go to um, yes. unanswered questions. Yes, I who's, who's I had who I what? had to look up questions. characters. Oh yeah, okay. that's good though. Um, There's and an amazing. I did that this time because I thought the first time I read it, I thought that Mina was a woman whose head fell <laughs> off. How far with did scarf. you get through it before you knew that she wasn't the lady whose head came off? I I seriously <laughs> thought the whole thing. I You've thought... read Dracula. No, I don't think I have. I, I know you have. I bought it for you. <laughs> Have I read Dracula? It was probably a long time ago. Mm. Anyway, there is an amazing set of annotations for this. There's a a, a journalist named Jess Nevins, um, who is like a Victorian, um, basically like you know his, historian um, enthusiast, whatever you sure. call it, and. He um, did these series of online um, annotations. When the thing would come out, he would create like a web page. And it's all, this is a long time ago, like when it came out. Um, So it's all like very web, like 1.0. Okay. And so he would like say page five, the person, and even people like in the crowd who don't have lines are intended to be, often are intended to be references. Uh, That really ramps up like in later volumes. Sure. Um, In fact, to the point where like, for instance, some of the people in the crowd, I don't know, I don't watch it, uh, are supposed to be like the ancestors of people from EastEnders. Wow. Because EastEnders is, you know, not a it's, book, it's but it is British an important part of British TV fiction show. and culture. Yeah. And so you would know such and such a character actor who'd been on the show for 20 years. So Neil is or O'Neill's right, um, drawing people to look like so and so. But anyway, Jess Nevins has, you can still find him online, just search for Jess, J E S S Nevins, like it sounds. Um, has a uh, things for each of them. Uh, he's not done the uh, the most recent fourth volume, The Tempest, because I guess he's too busy. Um, but uh, some fans have taken it up, so okay. you can always find uh, th- annotations online. He actually published his annotations wow. uh, in a book called Heroes and Monsters, so okay. he made a little money off of it. Yeah, but he, it's it's his interpretation, and he knows a lot of this stuff. And then it's also people write in, and he adds their stuff too. But okay, that's really cool. It is. Did you? Want me to answer anything? I know well, a lot. Um, well, I had to look up who I'm real smart. Du- Dupin was. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, um, I actually looked up a lot of people in it because I was like, I don't know who they are. Like quarter me, and I was like, I don't know who yeah. he is. Well, it, well, um, anyway, uh, it, it's a celebration, <laughs> but it's also yeah. it. It is kind of like a, oh, I'm pretty smart. Well, and Look I think how smart I am. I think I know all this somebody stuff. like you, like you would he get has, all the references. Well, like, he right has. Away. I think he said in interviews too, like I'm really more. Uh, like he's he's uh, read a lot of this stuff, but he also. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't read everything. So if he's doing something that's said in the 40s in Britain, and he needs a character who rides a bike or something like that, then he'll like reach out to people he knows, or he'll like go, oh, so and so rides a bike, and they're in these books with the thing. And so, okay, so sure. he'll do that sometimes. But, okay, but these are these are big hitters. I mean, Invisible Man, Dracula, like we got I it. know, right? Yeah. And it just it doesn't it seem like perfect material for a 2003 film. Starring Sean Connery? Mm. Doesn't that seem perfect? Well, we thought it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the worst movie ever made. Yeah. It just, it does seem like, he, I think he said too more that like, he initially thought of it as like, oh, what if I did like a Justice League that was made of literary characters? Well, yeah. Um, But then it became his own thing. Partially because, 
partially because it's published under uh Wildstorm Comics, basically. America's Best Comics was his the brand that Jim Lee, the founder of Wildstorm, gave him to just do whatever he wants. So Promethea, oh. Tom Strong, all these uh, things are America's Best Comics. Oh. The reason that he needed this safe harbor is because he didn't want to work for Marvel anymore. Yeah, I didn't and, want to work for DC. And DC pissed him off yeah. about the Watchmen thing, so he wasn't working for them. Then DC buys Wildstorm. Oh, my God. Now Alan Moore finds himself working for DC again. And he's like... Mm. He's not happy about that. No. And he let it go for a while, as all Moore stories go. He let it go for a while, and then DC did something he didn't like. And so he, because it's a creator-owned label, did he owns this. Uh, he let ABC have Promethea and everything else, and he and O'Neill just took this to... Top shelf comments. It's like his basically his his own thing. Okay. So all the re- oh the first two volumes are printed under DC, and I think actually the Black Dossier is too. Okay. Uh, and everything else post that is on his own label. So how many volumes are there? Of this? Oh boy, uh, there are. There's one, two. There's the Black Dossier, which is like a connecting sort of thing. It's actually a really cool book because it's not just a comic. It's designed, it's great to have it because it opens up and it's got all these like inserts and posters and stuff. And it's supposed to be this okay. file that the characters find like about them. Okay. Then there's volume three that takes place in 1910, 1969, and 2009 when it was published. Okay. You'd like the 69 one. It is centered around the movie performance. <laughs> okay. Yep. Wow. Which is like, Wow. Who is going to get that? Yeah, that's a <laughs> deep cut. That's a pretty good one. And then the then there's a, actually there's a, some side ones too. There's, there's a trio of Nemo stories uh, featuring Jenny Nemo, uh, his um, his daughter. Oh, okay. Um, because at this point, you know, we got to move on. He's too old. Yeah. Uh, but she takes over for him. She is Pirate Jenny from Three Penny Opera. Nice. I like it. So I like it a he's lot. getting, which bricked, it's not really... British, is, but. is German. But anyway, yeah. needed the character. It's a good character. It is a good character. Plus, Mac Heath is a Mac British the character knife. before he was in Mac the, the Knife yeah. in Three Penny Opera. So it works out. Okay. I love this shit! Oh my gosh. Can you tell? I'm vibrating! Yes. Not so, interesting at all to somebody so, who doesn't so, know or care. No. And then, then there's a fourth volume, uh, which is six issues, and the last issue hasn't come out yet. And that'll be the Okay. End. So you've read all of them. Except, except for the, the very, last, very issue. last issue. Yes. The Iron Throne. Um, <laughs> so I'm guessing the characters change as the story goes on? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll just tell you. Yeah, all right. There is there is a novel by H. Ryder Haggard, the guy that wrote... Um, oh, no, he didn't write The King's All His Minds. Did he? Anyway, it's, it's, it's a novel called She. It was actually made into a movie in the... Um, 50s, I think, and it's about an explorer who goes to Africa and he meets um, this uh, woman who calls herself a goddess named Aisha, and she's immortal. She is the titular she, and she has this pool that like makes you forever young. So okay. in later volumes, Mina like and Alan find this pool and are able to restore their youth, and so they go on into the future. They become our central characters. Okay, going into the future. All right, and then in later volumes. He does actually use some future stuff, like um, he can't use like Buck Rogers or anything like that. It's just too too high profile. But he yeah. finds other future comics. So there's some characters who come back from a book set in the future, in a like a Days of Future Past kind of way. They're coming back to the past in order to try to prevent that future. And so okay. they get mixed in, and it gets real, real, real obscure, but yeah. fun. I can't remember, like, what were the characters in the movie? Um, so the movie this, has like... pretty much all the same characters. They pull the trigger on Mina having vampire powers. Everybody thought that she would have vampire powers in this because she was bitten by Dracula. Right. And Moore never does that okay. because he doesn't care. He just likes the idea of this character who, what happened to her yeah. in Dracula? You know, everybody cares about what happens to Jonathan, but what happened to her? Uh, so, yeah, the character in the film does have uh, vampire powers. And then they add Tom Sawyer. That's so random. It's not British. Uh, he's Yeah, he's American. And they add uh, Dorian Gray as well. Dorian oh, Gray is okay. referenced in this, but he is an actual character in that. Okay. I thought 
I remember Dorian Gray being it, and I, I wasn't sure. Yes. Okay. Played by Stuart Townsend, I believe. Okay. I don't know why I know that. Uh, <laughs> you know Anything of stuff. else? Um, who's your favorite character in this series? Probably Mina, but I also like Andrew Norton. Andrew Norton. You said series. Yeah, I did. Not volume. Andrew Norton is the titular. No, he's not titular. <laughs> not at all. He's the hero of a book by Ian Sinclair called Slow Chocolate Autopsy. Okay. And it is a sort of hysterical uh, fiction. Uh, what is it? Magical. Magic realism. Uh, sure. Hysterical realism. Yeah. It's like a hysteric uh, realist book. It's set in London, and the idea is is Andrew Norton is the main character. He is the prisoner of London, meaning that he is like Johnny, uh, what's his name, uh, Pilgrim in uh, Slaughterhouse-Five. He is unstuck in time. Okay. So he can see all of history in London, but only in London. Oh. And at one point, he becomes this character that kind of connects the three time periods of Volume 3 in that Mina and a kind of shitty version of the League <laughs> in 1910 are doing stuff and they discover a problem that will become a problem in 2009 and they keep going to Andrew Norton to like get information from him but <laughs> this is just so awesome he is they're all fiction to him he is from the real world somehow so he oh, is wow. the meta meta character in this meta tale oh my goodness so he's unstuck in time he remembers meeting them for the first time you know and then he talks to them later and mentions things that's going to happen to them but he also mentions real world events okay. like the 77 bombings and stuff like that. so it's clear that he is aware of the quote-unquote real world and then when they come to him he's like oh yeah this is a good one i like that you know this story or something like that like he knows that they are fiction but they don't understand what he's talking about it's oh, okay like, ah! and then the best part is he's modeled off of the real life ian sinclair oh really yeah oh well, that's cool that's so bad. <laughs> and then and I, also complete two-handed jerking off like i i yeah. fully admit that and that's why i asked you before does this i i'm in too deep does this work is this even a good story i don't know i mean i don't know if you take the references away i don't know if it's a good story or not do you know what the next one's about what's the next one about <laughs> what do you think it's about i don't know what it's happens the on the last page of, of the fir- of this one um are you, you talking about the quarter main story <laughs> we should probably talk or... about that too it's about the world of worlds yeah, okay. It's the World of Worlds. Yeah. yeah. So, World World War One. The War of the Worlds. Oh, War of the Worlds. Yeah, sorry. This might I'm not be for you. Yeah, what'd you think about that? Um, I, In the... You read the, the collected edition. Yes. That means that instead of the chapters being after the comic story, it's all together. So, you're just reading a novella, basically. Yes. That was probably hard. That was hard. I didn't know there was another way to read that. Um, so there. We don't have to do the whole thing. Okay. We're out of time. Um, I mean. It's an adventure where Quartermain. John Carter of Mars meets uh, Randolph Carter, the hero of several Lovecraft stories, meets the time traveler from H.G. Uh, Wells, meets oh, Alan Quartermain. I didn't really. <laughs> I thought you looked up the references. I, I did the rest of the book, but for some reason I didn't think to do it in the in the story at the back. I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, okay, here we go. Like he's he he had like this drug, like yes. and like he and it, goes to this place, and it becomes in itself at the end. I guess the whole thing is a a Lovecraftian type of tale like a gothic yeah. horror type thing because he becomes yeah. possessed by this some creature this creature this shugoth or something like that and then yeah. the, the house burns down at the end you know like the house yeah of or something like that yeah like L- lady regal or whatever her name was was she who she based off of i don't know why would you ask i don't know <laughs> look it up um Jess but Nevins. she she somehow like dies like and then she she's dies. like like scared to death or and something there like is that. a lady with no shirt on so that's good I didn't realize that his, she had no shirt on. His servant has no shirt on or whatever. Oh, I didn't realize that. Because you got to get some boobs in there. Oh, of oh course. Kevin O'Neill. Um, but uh, yeah, they kind of had like uh, magical realism or whatever. And well, like she was, she was using some chants and she was using like 
almost like blood magic or something like that. Yeah, and she was an African native. I, know. I swear to God that they steer away from this stuff after this volume. I know. Would you recommend it? Um, I you know what I would. I I do think <laughs> after like not looking up who the characters were and the, the end story there, I really do think it's important to know who the characters are because I think you is get it more fun to all it. to to find that out. Um. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a pause. Um, Careful, watch your ass. I I think it is. I mean, it's pretty clear who Jekyll and Hyde are. Um, Captain Nemo. I mean, that's pretty clear. Um, I hadn't really heard of Quartermain before, so um, you it's know. not really a character that's survived so much. You know, there was those Richard Chamberlain movies, right? Wasn't there? Don't say right. You don't know what I'm talking about. I don't about. know what you're talking Sharon about. Sharon Stone. Okay. Um. We should watch those. Um, didn't uh, Noah Wiley from uh, wasn't he in a thing, or was that just the librarian? The librarian. Anyway, is what it's you're a, thinking of yeah. The, the sad thing is that a lot of these characters, because they're in public domain, don't see exposure. You'd think I see. anybody could do anything with them, right? But a property holder, you know, a studio or whatever, doesn't want to use them because they can't get exclusive rights to them, and so. They feel like they can't, you know, exploit them fully. Right. And so, yeah, we don't have like a an Alan Quartermain thing going on. Right. Or really a, a Mina Murray thing going on either. Yeah, v- vampires though. Yeah. I would recommend this absolutely as long as you like having a concordance <laughs> open while you're reading yeah. something. If you're comfortable reading something and then also Googling, yes. you know, on your Kindle or whatever you're doing, uh, what it is... Um, the ultimate version of this should have hyperlinks in the text, right? Ooh, so when good Sel- idea. So Selwyn Cavor, Professor Selwyn Cavor shows up, you can go, mm, just click on this. Right. Click on the guy, and then it just pulls up a thing. I think that's a great idea. Let's work on that. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely would um, recommend it for that reason. Should we um, Should we keep going? We can keep going. Not like want. next week, but just in the future, come back to this? Sure. Yeah, I think we should. Okay. <laughs> More got in trouble because all... So I've read this a couple times now, so I tend to skip over like the fake ads and things like that because I just, you know, I got a life to live. Yeah. But they're, they've all got extra material and they have these like fake uh, ads like, gentlemen, do you suffer from gilly bottom or something? Right, yeah, right. Can, yeah. So in one, uh, in issue five, um, there was an advertisement for a uh, Marvel brand douche. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was published wow. by, you know, DC at the time. Wow. So that was fine. But uh, they got in trouble for that. Like somebody at Marvel, like complained. Of course they did. DC's like, well, that's not how we do things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, they had to. They had the entire um, print run destroyed, and they had to reprint issue five. Wow, yeah. that's too bad. And then in a, in a later title, uh, I can't remember which one. Um, they had an ad for Miracle Douche Recall, saying like the the, the douche isn't good. Oh my goodness. And that is a reference to the fact that Marvel Man, you know, was uh, created by Alan Moore and, and was later changed to, in, in the UK, it was changed to Miracle Man later on because Marvel. Because Marvel was like, yeah, you can't have a character named Marvel. Yeah. So he even, he, even his jokes are meta. Oh my gosh. He's got to get everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know why. The chicken's like, well, uh, because the light was was green and there's a little white chicken walk sign, so <laughs> it was safe to travel. Is that a manager? No, no. I don't know. I give you a toast, ladies and gentlemen. I give you a toast. All right, that's it. Well, we did it. We did it. Yeah. Don't you got to pick something that nobody wants to hear that we can talk about that you love because this is mine. Wow, I don't, I don't think that nobody wants to hear about it. I think people want to hear about it. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you're right. People are just shaking their heads so violently; their earphones are coming out of their head. Uh, find us on social media. Search for Justin Up Trope. That's where we are. Uh, follow us, like us, do all the good stuff. Get to us on those platforms like those uh, Stitchers. 
you have to apply to be on Stitcher. Did you know that? I did not I know that. I knew that in the past. I just remembered it recently because I put a new show on Stitcher that I'll talk about when this plugs over. Uh, find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. Subscribe to the show. It comes right to you as soon as it's ready. It's the best way to get the show. Also, you can give us a rating, please, would yes. you? We'd appreciate it. Give us a review. Tell us how you think we're doing. That's how we're going to move up in the ranks. And for that rating, give us five frozen bodies of oh James gosh. Professor James Moriarty. Yeah. Wow. They thaw him out to use his like sperm to it's tied into like another weird What? Uh yeah, well, it's in the back matter. Oh my god. The I back don't matter I of know. I think the second one is an almanac basically where he just starts going I'm going to get these references out here. So it's like the part of it's a travel log and they're like, then we sailed by the Isle of something, something. And that's a reference to some story, short story that nobody's ever heard of. Oh it's so God. amazing. I love it. Anyway, give us five stars. Um, <laughs> yeah. So here's the deal. I launched a new show. Yes. I know. I know. Star Trek. It's called Backtracking. It's about Star Trek, but it's also about pop culture. Many times I've been watching in. Star Trek movie, a Star Trek TV show or something, and I've thought, well, that seems a lot like something else I've seen before. Right. And, you know, that's how it works. That's how art works. You're inspired by things. You are trying to create something that's like something else. What we do is, uh, Gooey Fame and I, host of the Enterprising, oops, nope, that's not right, uh, the Existence is Feudal podcast, uh, talk about the inspirations for classic Trek episodes. So, for instance, our first episode was talking about the episode Star Trek Mine, Star, Starship Mine, uh, which is an episode where Captain Picard is trapped with terrorists on his ship. Yep. That seems a lot like Die Hard. Yeah. So we talk about Die Hard, talk about Starship Mine, how they connect to each other, a little history on Die Hard, a little history on the episode. We don't go too deep into the facts, but we just kind of have a good time talking about that stuff. Our awesome. second episode should be out pretty soon over the uh, weekend here. We're talking about the Beastie Boys. Awesome. Beastie Boys didn't inspire Star Trek. Star Trek inspired them. So sometimes we flip it around <laughs> a little. Uh, but yeah, but we're talking about all kinds of things like that and covering things like, you know, the Trouble with Tribbles, classic episodes, all the way up to Star Trek Discovery. So if you are not sick of hearing me talk about Star Trek, uh, if you're an Enterprising Individuals fan, you might like this show. It is on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, and soon it'll be on Stitcher. Very nice. That's my pitch for that. Um, pretty soon I'm going to form a league of podcasts. I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> Just get. Uh, we'll have Joe Rogan teams up with Adam Carolla, oh and together God. with Terry Gross, <laughs> they decide to. <laughs> what are they going to do? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm going to talk your ear off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that sounds great. You ever tried DMT? Yeah, all right. <laughs> They're going to go through the Sundered Veil themselves. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Uh, I can't wait. I want to write that. So I'm going to go do that. Uh, join us next week for something else. And until then, we're signing off. I'm your host, Caliban. I'm your co-host, Mikan Keep the geek fires burning. <laughs> <laughs>